Hello, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Ruben Cespedes. I'll be your host for today and welcome to your design challenge. Um, yesterday we had so much fun creating uh, some photography and blending modes. And today we have something pretty uh, um, awesome because it's gonna be all about Photoshop quick tips. Uh, welcome everyone again on the chat. Hello everyone on the chat right there. And just remember guys that we are live on Behance every single day uh, for tutorials like this. Also, don't forget to join us on our Discord where you can, you know, talk to other creatives and get inspiration. Also, you can post um, your designs there. So that way our mentors can definitely give you some feedback and you can start leveling, leveling up your design skills. All right. So that being said, let's jump in into the Photoshop quick tips that we have for today's challenge. All right. So, um, we have some files on the description down below. If you wanted to download them, that's great. If you want to use your own assets in your own file, that's great again, uh, uh too. So just follow along and I'm going to start with different kinds of Photoshop, uh, quick tips that I have. And I'm going to start with the first one. And the first one is going to be about hair, um, selection technique. I know there there's a lot of like questions out there and how you can actually make a hair selection and how you can start like creating uh, more clean designs uh, when it comes to um, hair and you know like all those little you know individual hairs that we have um, and kind of like separate that from the background image so we have the first um, asset here. We have a subject here. And what we're going to do, like always, I'm going to just like duplicate this layer by pressing Command J. There you go. Okay, now that we have a duplicate, um, you can use the whatever selection tool you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and, and just like go ahead and use the magic one tool just to show you uh, what we are going to be doing today. So I'm going to click on the background. So it's, it's kind of like similar. And then I'm going to just like, what I'm going to do is just invert that selection. So command or control shift I, and then I'm going to press command J control J on, on your PC. And then if we add in a new background color, so if I go, you know, on my adjustment layer and press solid, you can see, and I'm going to leave it, you know, black for now. So that way you can see what I'm talking about. This is pretty bad and we don't want that. Uh, we want to get rid of all of those details in the background, all of that and bring just the, the hair. So that way we can make a better composition. So this is what I'm talking about. We're not going to, you know, we're going to do something way better than that. Um, and we're going to use a, a different, there are different techniques, uh, that you can use in order to make a great selection. So that's what we were going to do right now. So this is the wrong way to do things. I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So I'm going to just delete this file. Uh, I'm going to just hide this one because we are going to use this one. And then, you know, if you're joining us right now, uh, welcome to the design challenge for today. We're doing some Photoshop quick tips. Uh, the first uh, tick, uh, tip that we're, we're doing today right now is about hair selection and how you can, you know, get it out of the background so you can uh, bake, make a, a better and clean um, compositions. So I just duplicated the layer and then what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go into my properties and then go and select subject. Boom. That's the first step. So we have a better selection as, as we can see right here. And then what you're going to do is just make sure you are under, um, a selection tool, whether it's the marquee tool, whether it's, you know, the polygon tool. Um, and then when you have your selection, then go and press select and mask. And this is what I'm going to, this is what it's going to do. Photoshop is going to create the magic of, you know, removing some of the, the whole, you know, background, but you can still see some of the pink background through her hair. So uh, what we're going to do is just refine those, um, hair. So that way it looks a lot better. 
So what I want you to do is go on the right panel here and then scroll down and then there is an output uh, settings and then the output settings here. There is a, a checkbox here that says decontamination or like decontaminate colors. So we're going to click on that and you're going to see the difference. Boom. That is way better. And then what we're going to do is actually refine the actual the edges of of each of those hair. So we're going to go to the second one here on the left. We're going to click on refine edge and then we're going to zoom in a little bit. There you go. Then we're going to make the brush a little bit smaller by pressing left bracket. And then what you want to do is just like click on the outside so he picks up like that pink color and then you can start painting again. You see we have some here. We're going to remove that as well. And then we're going to keep going. We're going to keep removing some of some of the pink that we can still see. So just don't be afraid to go in there. So just go in there, start painting all over. So that way you can remove some of the some of the pink from there and we're just refining you know the selection there's there are other tricks that also i'm going to show you look how clean that looks that looks way better now uh, let's just go around this area just a little bit in case we miss something and then a little bit there i don't think we miss anything so let's go back again I think this is great. Okay, I think this is perfect. Once you're happy with it, go back again into your output settings and then in the output to just select new layer with layer mask and then press OK. Boom. So we're going to bring this up and then we're going to turn the background color and then we're going to change that background color for something else, something I don't know along you know, this is kind of nice. So this is what I'm talking about. Look at how cleaned out looks compared to the one that we did previously. And this is kind of like a, a technique I've, you know, I've been using different techniques, of course, throughout the year. But um, there's some sort of pinkish like coming up like from this and I can see it. But maybe just I can turn this into green so you can still see some of that pink coming through her hair still. And one trick that I like to do for doing this is using the burn, uh, the burn tool. And what we're going to do is just going to click on the actual layer. And then we're going to go here on the, on the toolbar and then look for the burn tool, which is right here. Uh, one second. And it's this one right here. It's kind of like, look like a little hand. Um, so select the burn tool, make it a little bit bigger by pressing uh, the right bracket. And then the range is mid tones, exposure 50%, that's good. And then what we're gonna do is start painting over those. And I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit more so you can see the details. So you see that there's a little bit of red in there. So we're gonna burn this, you know, make it, you know, black. So that way it blends in a little better. So we're gonna keep painting over you know, painting a little bit over. If you see any red, just I'm using the pen tool right now, um, the burn tool right now. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. I don't see anything else. There you go. Just burn it a little bit. So that way it blends in a little bit better. And then we're going to go back and you see how clean that this looks. This is perfect. You can change the background color to whatever color you want, and you're going to still have a really great hair selection, which is pretty, pretty cool. All right. So that's uh, example number one. I'm going to bring another example for hair. Uh, so that way we see that we can do this on any type of hair and any type of particles that you might have. Um, so this is the second one. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate it. Command J, Control J. 
And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just like go into properties and then select subject. And then once you have your subject selected, make sure you have a selection tool and then so go in the middle, select and mask. And it did pr a pretty good job by doing this. I don't have to do a lot here because I, I see that that was a great selection, but then go down into your output settings and just click on uh, discontaminate colors. There you go. So the difference between that one and here, we get more details and that's what we want. Um, so then I, I think I'm not even going to go and refine uh, because it looks pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty good. So we're going to go into the output again and then just like click on uh, or select new layer with layer mask. Click OK. Then we're going to just like create a solid color for the background and you see um, how good the selection is. Um, you you can still see some of some some of the uh, the whites maybe or the the light gray that we have in the background. That's why it's very important when you are in that stage that you can go back and just like you know mask it out if you need to. Uh, but we're gonna pick just a random color, maybe like this color is kind of cool. Maybe this one, maybe that one is kind of cool. There you go, and you can move your course you select layer and you can move it around you know and you can actually go in and if you wanted to delete something like you don't want this to be in the in the image what you could do is just like select the mask press b and then you you just bring uh bring the the brush and then press s x uh, make sure your foreground is black so that way you can remove stuff. If you bring it back to white, what it's going to do is going to bring background image. So press X again so you can remove some of that stuff if you want to. There you go. Let's say if you want to get rid of this section right here, you can do the same thing here and just like remove it. So that way you have a better selection and then you can put some text here on the side. So that's tip number one. Um, I'm going to close this right away and let's jump in into the next Photoshop tip. And the next one it's um, what we're going to do is actually it's going to be the probably the fastest way to change the color of a subject. And I'm going to bring it up right now is this image right here. This applies to, you know, any image that you are going uh, to be changing the color, um, depending the color that you want to change. Of course, you, you have some highlights and shadows and stuff like that. You got to be very careful. This is kind of like the fastest way you can do this, but there's so many different techniques and ways you can change the color of an object. For example, in this image, I wanted to change the color of this orange, right? Uh, and I want to make it like pretty quick. I don't want to, you know, like start masking things out because it's going to take a long time. Maybe I just need something like done pretty quick. And what we're going to do is just duplicate this image again uh, by pressing Command J, Control J on, on your PC. And then um, what I wanted to do is just remember, it's going to be the quickest way that you can change this orange color. Um, so you're going to go into your adjustment layers and you're going to click on hue saturation. Now that you are um, in here with the hues and, and saturation, what you're going to do is like you see under press it, there's a little hand here with the left and right handles. You're going to press hold down option or alt on your PC and just click on it. And then what you're going to do is just pick that color, like the color you want to change. In this case, it's going to be the orange. This is a great area to pick, uh, uh, use the color picker. So you're going to pick that color and then you're going to start sliding this, you know, left or right. How easy it is, but bear with me because we're going to do some, some little tricks here. So, you can also use colorize if you want to, but it's going to just like do the whole thing and we don't want to do that. 
Uh, so again, I'm going to just start over again. I'm going to delete this file. I'm going to go into my adjustment layer. I'm going to click on hue saturation. And then under press it, there is a little icon here uh, with the left and right handles. And what you're going to do is hold down option and click. And then just with the color picker, just pick a pick the color that you want to change. It's orange. And then what you're going to do is just like slide the hue. In this case, let's do like a purple, you know, like a purple. Yeah, something like that, maybe. But then what we're going to do is, you know, lower the saturation just a tiny bit. And also the light and uh, lightness, just bring it down just a tiny bit because it's way too bright. Uh, just bring it down a little bit. That's cool. And you probably noticed that her face and in her hands and her skin tone got affected because she has some orange hue in it. And what we're going to do is just like remove that. So click on the mask, press B for your brush, make it bigger. So you can bring some of the natural color from the image. So I'm going to start erasing from her face first. That's good. Then her hand. So I'm going to just go in a little bit and just like remove that. Make sure you have your foreground color in black with the brush, with a soft brush. So that way you can paint over and you can bring some of her color back. Same thing here. What we're going to do is just like remove all of that. So that way it looks natural. There you go. Okay, that's great. You can go like pretty detail. Like, whoops, you see, I did a little bit of way too much there. So just press X to bring the white. So you can paint back the way it was. Okay, there you go. Just zoom out just to see the, the difference. There you go. And you can go like from, you know, orange to purple with a few clicks. Also, you can do way more than this. You can just double click on the actual uh, layer and then underlining layer, just press option, hold down option or um, hold on your PC and then start dragging you know, dragging uh, to the right. So that way it gives like a more realistic color. And what I like to do also is just to turn down the opacity just a tiny bit, you know, not a, not a lot, but I don't know, probably like 90% or something like that. So it looks way more natural. So this is one way to do things. Um, of course, you can delete this from the from the background. I think I'm seeing some some color coming through there. So I'm going to just get rid of it because I just want the dashboard to be changed. And then if you wanted to change the color even from the the actual um, purple, you can just double click on your on your hue saturation layer and then you can change it to whatever you want. Like, you know, like let's go into like a green and then play with your you know, saturation and your colors and your lightness and whatever you want to do there. There you go. Yeah. And that's how easy it is to, you know, change the color of a subject like pretty quick. All right. Moving on to tip number three. Let's do a dual tone, um, a quick dual tone effect. And we're going to bring this image here. Boom. Let's see. Pretty, pretty cool image. I think I can type type in something so that way we don't feel that white space. Just being there, uh, we can use, I don't know, like maybe like home decor. Something like that. Uh, we can make this whoops, text tool, select all, and then we're going to make it white. Let's bring up the properties so I can, mm, I don't know, maybe make this, um, I don't know, 80, 80 maybe. Yeah, that's good. And then I'm going to just command T to transform and just like pull. You don't have to hold down anything option or nothing. Just like 
just pull. Uh, that's that's kind of like good right there. All right, so then we're doing a dual tone for this uh, effect. So I'm just gonna duplicate like always because I always want to save my original. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is just go down into your adjustment layer and just click on gradient map. And this is where the magic is gonna happen. So click on you know, the gradient map, and then whatever you want to choose for your duotone, just like, you know, pick colors here, or you can just use your own. For example, we're going to pick some, I don't know, some blues maybe. And woo, I like that. I like that a lot. That's kind of nice. But then I'm going to change this blue color for a green color maybe. Oh, there you go. That's nice can make it lighter, darker, um, maybe darker because we have a text in there. And maybe this purple, I'm going to make it even darker maybe. Or let's see what happens if I go no, want to go there probably more. No, I like this better. OK, click OK, click OK. And then here it is, your duotone. Pretty quick pretty uh, straightforward. If you want to have more contrast and stuff like that, you can go ahead and just click on the adjustment layer and then you're going to click on the curves. And then what you're going to do is just play around with the curves. Like you can go like pull the dark, you know, area, like if you want to make it darker and then pull the light if you want to make it lighter. But um, I like to play with the actual curve and just like experiment and see where, where I want it to land. And then you have like a, a really cool duotone effect. And you can do that with different colors. Make sure like your colors uh, work and there's a combination of, of the colors that, that, you know, create a harmonious design. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, let's jump into it right away because we are uh, in a little bit of rush here. So let's see what else do we have here. I think we have... Uh, this one is pretty, pretty, pretty cool. And let me just open it again. All right. So you have this image. You like this image a lot. But let's say, for example, I'm just going to duplicate it by pressing Command J or Control J on your PC. And let's say, for example, that you like this image a lot, but you need to change this image to be winter or have, you know, instead of having like, this is kind of like a fall or, you know, type of scenario, but you want something that it's more green, green, and you want to, you know, change all your, you know, kind of like all your plants and, and, and everything in there and to make it greener, uh, or you want to make it, you know, like snowy and very wintry. Um, there is a, 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 an amazing tool an amazing um, filter called Neural Filter that allows you to, you know, do this with one click. So I'm just going to make this image a little bit smaller so that way it runs faster. So instead of 300 resolution, I'm going to make it 150 and then I'm going to zoom in. Let's say, for example, that I want to make this like wintry, like make it winter, right? So pretty easy. Go into your filters. Then from your filters, you're going to go into uh, neural filters, and then you're going to go into landscape mixer. And this is under the creative uh, section here. So you're going to go in landscape mixer, and then you're going to, if you have this little icon, you need to download it. So download it first, and then you can toggle it. And then we talk about making it winter. So just pick the winter one, which is the, the first one, and just click on it and wait for the Photoshop to, to do its magic. So check this out. Boom. One click. Done. You're you're literally done. You're completely done with this image. And look how beautiful it looks. It looks actually like, you know, there's the snow and everything in there. Uh, let's say, for example, we talk about having um, this image and having it, you know, let's for the sake of this, let me just like create a new smart filter in the output and click OK. And then we're going to just duplicate this image again. Command J. Hide that one. Go again into your filters, neural filters. 
And then in here, you're going to click again on landscape mixer. And then we're going to make it remember that we said we want to make it green and you know, so click on this image just to see what it does for you. If it makes it actually greener for you. There you go. And that's, you know, that's pretty dope. One click, you have a winter uh, right here and then another click and you have a beautiful, you know, spring, all green um, uh, image. And I really, really like this. And it, it's really, um, it definitely helps, helps you to create uh, compositions a lot faster. And that's kind of like it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I had a great, great uh, week uh, with the design challenge. So I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.